You're watching Major League Baseball's Virtual Network. I'm Nicholas Callis. These are your game recaps and standing updates from Friday, April the 24th, 2020. Starting in the American League East, the Toronto Blue Jays beat the Baltimore Orioles by a score of 4 to nothing. And this one involved a pitching decision that didn't need a save. Hinju Ryu got the win. He's now 3-1 and one on the season as a member of the Blue Jays as well. Just signed a contract in free agency this offseason. The Indians and Yankees played each other, and despite getting two runs in the sixth, the Indians couldn't score at all in any other inning in this game. The Yankees tallied a total of three runs, which included a walk-off hit in the ninth inning to allow the Yankees win, uh, to win by a run. 3-2 to two is the final score. Franklin Perez got the win. He's 2-0 and now out of the bullpen with the Yankees. Adam Simber got the loss. He's now 1-1. One one. The Royals and the Rays played each other. The Royals were able to get three runs in the fourth inning, but that didn't stop the Rays, who scored in four different innings and scored one run in each. They came out with four runs on six hits. The Royals, despite getting eight team hits, scored just three runs. Chaz Rowe got the win. Hill got the loss. Nick Anderson now with nine saves on the season. Interleague baseball between the San Diego Padres and the Detroit Tigers. The final score of this one was 11-8, and each of these teams managed to put up a five-run inning once in this game. However, the Padres had more offense, scoring 11 runs on 14 hits as compared to the Tigers, eight runs on 11 hits. Drew Pomeranz got the win. He's still undefeated in his decisions. Ryan Garcia got the loss, and Kirby Yates now with nine saves as the closer of the Padres. Red Sox and Twins played each other, and the Red Sox, after winning their previous game, are back on their losing ways and losing this one by a large amount. They gave up six runs in the first two innings and lost by a large margin. Jake Odorizzi got the win. Martin Perez, 1-4 and four so far as a member of this Red Sox team, and Tyler Clippert found a way to earn himself a save in this one, his first of the season, though he's not the closer of the Twins. The Angels and White Sox played each other. Each team scored one run in regulation, but this game took 15 innings to decide, and the Angels were able to walk it off in the bottom of the 15th inning. Moving to the AL West, this is a strict AL West matchup. And the Seattle Mariners beat the Texas Rangers by a score of 8-7. to seven. This game was also filled with offense. It included the Rangers scoring four runs in the fifth inning, and then the Mariners immediately responding with six runs in the sixth, leading to the 8-7 to seven final score. Brennan got the win. Farrell got the loss. Matt McGill now with nine saves on the season as the Mariners' closer. He started out the season slow, but he's been fulfilling most of his opportunities he's been provided in recent weeks more AL West baseball this between the Houston Astros and the Oakland Athletics the A's had the lead going into the ninth inning but Liam Hendricks blew his first save of the season and he got hit with the loss as well as the Astros walked it off in the bottom of the ninth inning Joe Biagini got the win out of the pen for the Astros Moving to the National League and one of our games of the day here on Major League Baseball's Virtual Network. It was the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves playing each other. And the Braves won by a score of 6-5. to five. This game was filled with much offense. And the Mets had the lead until the later parts of the game. The Braves chipped away and ended up getting the go-ahead run in the 8th inning. And then Will Smith closed it out for the Braves in the top of the ninth inning. Final score again, 6-5. to five. Braves won this one. The Phillies and Cubs played each other, and while the Cubs scored first in the fourth inning, the Phillies put up some crooked numbers from innings six to nine, and the final score was 15 to one. Aaron Nola got the win, and Hugh Darvish got the loss. Another blowout type of game, this one between the Reds and the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks scored three runs in the eighth inning, but that wasn't before the Reds put up ten runs through the first six innings. Made a statement in that first with a three-run first inning, and they came out with a win, scoring ten runs on ten hits. The Diamondbacks 
three runs on nine hits, and each team got an error charged to, to them. Madison Baumgartner got his first loss with the Diamondbacks after this game. He's now 3-1 and one on the season. The Dodgers and Pirates played each other in Game 1 of this series, and the Dodgers continuing to give the Pirates some fits. Dodgers won 7-2 in this one, put up a four-run first inning. The Pirates answered back in the third with two runs, but then the Dodgers tacked on some more later on in the game, and uh, that's your final right there. Clayton Kershaw got the win, his first of 2020. Chris Archer now 2-2 two two as the Pirates' ace for this season, and Kenley Jansen now has eight saves on the season. Miami Marlins beat the St. Louis Cardinals by a score of 6-2 to two, thanks to a four-run seventh inning. Eliezer Hernandez got the win out of the bullpen. He's 3-0 oh now on the season. And Alex Reyes now 1-1 one one out of the bullpen with the Cardinals. The Colorado Rockies finding more ways to win now than not. We'll see their last 10 games when we go to standings, but... Uh, over the last week, they've been winning more ball games after starting the year out in abysmal fashion. They're still in last place in the NL West, but every win helps, and this one much sweeter because it took 10 innings to finish, but the Rockies were able to walk it off and win this one in front of their home crowd. Rockies scored six runs on 10 hits. The Brewers got five runs on 10 hits, and despite the Brewers coming back with three runs in the eighth, they could not score any more at the end of regulation and then into extra innings. Carlos Estevez got the win, and Alex Claudio got the loss. Our other game of the day here on Major League Baseball's virtual network. The Washington Nationals played the San Francisco Giants, and the Nationals won despite going down early in the first inning. Brandon Belt and Evan Longoria each had solo home runs in that inning, but then the Nationals scored the second, the fifth, and the eighth, and the Giants did not score after the first inning, and they got the loss in this one. Wander Suero got the win. Gustav got the loss, and Sean Doolittle now nine saves with the Nationals this season. Let's take a look at the standings now. Starting in the American League East, the New York Yankees, after beating the Indians, they're 18-9, and nine, still in first place in the American League East, and they're on a nine-game winning streak 9-1 over their last 10 games. The Tampa Bay Rays are 15-12. They're three games back of the division on a three-game winning streak. The Baltimore Orioles had their winning streak snapped today. They're 14-11 now after losing to the Blue Jays. And they're also three games back of the division. The Toronto Blue Jays beat the Orioles today. They are 13-13, 500 winning percentage. Four and a half games back of the division. And then the Boston Red Sox, back on their losing ways now, have won four of their last ten, but are still eight and now have 20 losses. They're eight and 20, ten and a half games back of the division. In the American League Central, the Chicago White Sox are 18 and nine, still in first place in the Central despite losing two games. The Twins were on a two game winning streak, catching up to that first place spot. The Twins are 16-11, and 11, two games back of the division. The Cleveland Indians lost to the New York Yankees today. They are 15-13 and 13 now, three and a half games back of the division. And then the bottom two teams riding an elongated losing streak. The Kansas City Royals are 9-16, and 16, eight games back of this division, and they've won two of their last ten games. And then the Detroit Tigers are 6-20, and 20, 11 and a half games back of the division now on a five-game losing streak. And they've won three of their last ten games. So the American League West, a division that is still competitive. The Houston Astros won today. They're 15 and 11, still in first place in this division. And that's the only team with an above 500 winning percentage. The other three teams below that mark. The Athletics 13 and four, two and a half games back of the division. The Texas Rangers 12 and 13, also two and a half games back. And then the Seattle Mariners are 12 and 16. The Los Angeles Angels, 11-15. They're each four games back of the AL West. Moving to the National League, the Miami Marlins in the National League East are leaders. They're 17-9 on a six-game winning streak now. 
trailed by the Washington Nationals, who once led this division. They're now trailing one and a half games. The Atlanta Braves move themselves back to a 500 winning percentage. They are 14 and 14 on a five game winning streak now, heating back up. The Philadelphia Phillies are 13 and 13, also four games back of the division. And then the New York Mets are on a four game losing streak. They've lost seven of their last 10, and they're 9 and 17 in fifth place in the NL East. To the National League Central, the Milwaukee Brewers still leading the NL Central despite losing today. They're 17 and 9. The Chicago Cubs are 15 and 11, two games back of the division. The Cubs also lost today. And as did the Cardinals for that matter, 12 and 14 are the Cardinals. They are five games back of the division. And then the Cincinnati Reds won today by a large margin. They're they still have three wins in their last 10 games, but have moved into fourth place with a 9-16 and record. Seven and a half games back are the Reds. And then the Pirates have lost nine of their last 10 games. They're on a nine-game losing streak, and they fall into last place. 9-17 and is their record, and they are eight games back of the NL Central. And moving to the National League West, the San Diego Padres are 17-8. and They won today, and they still lead this division. The Los Angeles Dodgers are 16 and 10. They're on a seven-game winning streak. They have heated back up. They were four. They were around fourth place when this week began. Now they're in second place. They passed the Giants, and they're getting close to the top again. The San Francisco Giants are 15 and 11, two and a half games back. They're on a two-game losing streak now, after losing to the Nationals today. The Arizona Diamondbacks, five and five in their last ten games on a four-game losing streak. They are 12 and 14, five and a half games back. And the Colorado Rockies won their second game in a row, but they're still in last place in this division, eight and 17, and nine games back of the NL West. We're not going to look at any wild card standings because they're still irrelevant, and I'm tired of saying that they're irrelevant. So look into the f- look forward in the future of not seeing the wild card standings till we get closer to the All Star break. Uh, But probably not going to happen anymore in April, May, or uh, maybe even the early parts of June. Also, keep in mind that on Sunday, we're going to start displaying category leaders in both leagues. That's individual leaders in hits, in average, in home runs, in RBIs, in ERA, in pitcher wins. Uh, All of that will be coming up on Sunday uh, because the leaders are starting to form into realistic and... Uh, the more powerful groups that you typically see toward midseason. So you'll get to see those league leaders as well. Also, an announcement made today, Major League Baseball's virtual network is starting to broadcast three games a day instead of two. That will start on Sunday, May the 3rd. So when that new schedule comes out on Sunday, May the 3rd, expect a schedule that has three teams listed per day instead of two. That's in an effort for us to have every team featured at least once every week because we are celebrating the fact that we can still enjoy baseball and all teams in baseball uh, without real baseball being along. So it's not just the high teams. It's not just the best teams. It's not just the hot teams. We are covering every team to keep baseball, at least the feeling of it, alive. So with that in mind, this has been your game recaps and your standing updates from Friday, April the 24th, 2020. I'm Nicholas Callis. You've been watching Major League Baseball's Virtual Network.